Hello. In this video, let's talk about welders with transformers that supply welding wires from a spool to the welding spot. We will see differences looking inside and at electrical diagrams. How do they work? The main component of such welders is transformer. When we supply 120 or 230 volts to the primary winding of the transformer, the secondary gives us about 30-40 volts. Lowering voltage on the secondary side of the transformer, we can increase the current. It is the high value of the current, about 100-150 amps, that allows us to create an electric arc, and therefore high temperature, and melt metal along with the welding wire and create a permanent bond. But it is not enough to just melt the metal. To create a solid fusion, we must protect the molten metal paddle. Therefore, we can use welding wire with a flux core, and when the flux melts, it protects the paddle from the atmospheric elements. We can also weld with a shielding gas. And here we have two different processes that are usually called MIG welding. But MIG welding is the process that uses inert gas a gas that is not chemically active in the welding process. Usually it is pure argon or helium and it is used to weld metals like aluminum. The other one is mag welding and this process uses active gas like CO2 or mixture of CO2 and argon. This process is used to weld steel. So when you see that somebody is advertising his product as a gasless MIG welder, then it is an oxymoron. Same as non-alcoholic beer. You have to be really motivated to get drunk with such a beer. Here we have two welders. MIG Pack 140 and Canadian Tire Mastercraft MIG Flux Core Wire Feed Welder. Basically same as Craftsman 135M. Both can work with the flux core wire or with gas in the mag process. This one can work with a special gun to weld aluminum in the MIG process. Here we have knobs to set wire speed and switches to set the current. This welder has a nice wire feeding mechanism made mostly out of metal. Clear setup instructions. Switch to weld with aluminum welding gun. The chip model is equipped with a mainly plastic made mechanism. And the instructions are not so clear. One and the other have ability to switch polarization to the welding gun. This means that those welders have DC current to the electrodes. Let's take a look inside. Here we have the main transformer, choke, rectifier, electric valve for welding gas, control board for the wire feeder, wire feeder motor, big capacitor, and cooling fan. In this model we have the main transformer, choke, rectifier, cooling fan. Control board for the wire feeder and wire feeder motor. We don't have here any big capacitors like in the other welder. Let's take a look at the electric diagrams. First is the cheaper. Main transformer. Power supply 120 volts. This is the side of the primary winding. Control board. On the secondary winding side, the power supply for the wire feeder. 
rectifier, choke. Why do we have the rectifier and the choke? Transformer works only with AC current. If we didn't have the rectifier and the choke, we would have AC sinusoidal current. Our electric arc would light up and extinguish with the frequency of 60 Hz. We would love to have a nice and stable electric arc. The rectifier is not enough. It will just flip the bottom wave up. The arc will still go down to zero and up again. So we add the choke and sometimes the capacitor. The choke is just a coil that counteracts changes in the electric current in the circuit. When the current is applied to the coil, it allows pass it through, but also produces a magnetic field. When the current goes down, the magnetic field induces an electric current. That is why this coil is called the choke. It works like your boss. You tell him, hey boss, I promised my kids to take them for two weeks vacation in Orlando. And the boss says, great, your two week vacation is scheduled in November. Have fun. But in our circuit, the choke makes a great job paddling against. Our smooth out a little bit current produces a much stable electric arc. But one of the welders had a capacitor. Why is that? When we look into the schematic of the welder, we see that the capacitor is parallel to the electrodes. When the current is passing through, the capacitor is charged, and when the current goes down, the capacitor is slowly discharged, smoothing out the shape of the current. Let's see those graphs on the oscilloscope. Here I have a transformer, rectifier, some capacitors, and coils. The oscilloscope turned on. Easy, vacuum tubes must warm up first. See, this is the equipment I have to work with. But this is what I can afford with such a small number of subscriptions. One of the tubes is burned. There will be no presentation, unfortunately. Obviously, I had other welders before. My very first one was... <sighs> first one was Yolanda. Well, we are talking welders here. My first welder was the cheapest Harbor Freight model. It was a flux core welder only. It is long gone, but I still have the schematic. As you can see, the secondary winding was going straight to the welding gun and the earth clamp. It was leaving a lot of spatter behind. There are many videos on YouTube on how to modify this welder, adding a rectifier, capacitor and choke. We look into the welders, but now let's look at the ground clamps and the guns. This clamp here is not really good. The first improvement one can make is to replace it with a clamp that has copper contacts. This cheap welder has a trigger contact inside the gun along with the gas valve. So when you modify your welder from AC to DC, you can swap the gun and then you can weld with gas. This more expensive welder comes with a clamp with copper contacts. The gun holds only the trigger switch. The gas valve is inside the unit. So here you have it. Check what you buy or modify what you already have. But do it at your own risk.